you know, well, really, I knew what was coming because World War II had already started, you know, and that's, I, I knew that eventually that they were, they were going to draft me. I think they, they had an idea probably that something big was going to happen and, and they already had the draft going. I, I knew that as, as soon as I got old enough, 18, I had to, I had to register. And I was in the uh, first, first, I was in the first draft of 18 year olds. And they got down that low. The following is presented with limited editing. Those interviewed are witnesses to history and deserve to have their stories heard in their entirety. Um, I, I guess if you would maybe uh, start off telling me when you were born and uh, where you grew up and kind of like what your family did and, and things like that growing up. I was born in Hanson, Missouri, in 19, February the 4th, 1924. And I was told that uh, the, the snow was just about boot top deep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, lived our own practice. Well, I got out of high school, I lived there. <clears throat> and uh, we had a, my dad had uh, uh, close to 300 acres down the river. Uh, I think it's 280 something like that. It's right close to 300. And uh, we were raised corn and hay, soybeans, feed the cattle. We always had. We raised hogs, cattle, and uh, we had uh, uh, cows we milked. We had fresh milk all the time. And that was one of the jobs that I had as a kid growing up was to milk the cows, you know. And uh, uh, usually you'd have to go out in the pasture and get them and drive them into the barn and put out some feed for them and then you could milk the cows. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, I went to uh, Hinch School. Uh, we had, uh, uh, at one time, we had enough kids at Hinch that we had two teachers. And that was, that was something to have two teachers in a, in a country school, but there was about 60 some kids. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, it was, uh, a good school. We had good teachers, and uh, kids were well disciplined because we were scared. We were scared of what happened to us for us. <laughs> was the <coughs> was the teacher <coughs> not afraid to wrap you on the hand with a <coughs> ruler or something? Or? I had a uh, a man teacher that was. Uh, uh, maybe you can't remember, but when they used to ship all this uh, stuff at, in the stores to the cardboard boxes. They, they had it in boxes, board boxes, that was about an inch thick. And uh, he'd make his paddles out, out of them, and he'd bore holes in them. And you didn't want very many applications of that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, it was it was good. It, uh, you learned a good lesson to behave yourself. Were you ever on the receiving end? <laughs> yes, very much so. <laughs> but, uh, this one was good enough to where 
I graduated in, in seven years from school. So I took two grades in one year. Oh, wow. And, uh, and I, I graduated uh, in, uh, in seven years. Okay. Now, and then from then you went on to I Bourbon, went, right? I went to Bourbon, Bourbon High School. I, Bourbon had just started, uh, they started a four-year high school in Bourbon in 1936, I believe. And uh, my brother is four years older than I am. He went to, uh, uh, he went one year, one year to, uh, they had a, a high school hence, had a two-year high school hence. And then he, he finished up that in Bourbon. And he, and he finished up in the, in the fall of, of, or spring of 37. And I, I started the high school. And uh, let's see, no, wait, I'll get this right. Uh, Thirty-seven, four, yeah, thirty-seven. I started in the fall of thirty-seven, and I graduated from Bourbon High School in nineteen forty-one. Uh, Hinch, that's that's not that's kind of a, a good clip from Bourbon. Was there a school bus that came out and picked you up? Yeah, we had a, we had a school bus, and they uh, cold weather, uh, snow, ice. that make you know they put chains on the buses, and that that bus. Went to went to Scotia, picked up some kids over there, and then come back through Hinch and picked the kids up at Hinch, and then they went up Brazil to Anthony's Mill, picked up kids over there, and then come picked up kids all along the road to Bourbon. Huh? Uh, and uh, we never call they never call school off because of bad weather. <laughs> we had the uh, I think it was uh, 1930, 1939, we had uh, 30 some days, but it wasn't above zero. And all the water was frozen up in Bourbon. The mains, everything was frozen up. And we had a little old Irishman that was janitor. He, he carried water up, uh, there was a, we had a steam boiler outside in a little concrete building, and they had these uh, steam heaters. You turn them on, turn them off, you know, valve on them. That's, that's how they heated the school. And um, he would carry two five-gallon buckets of water at a time up there and kept, kept school open. <laughs> and Jack would go, uh, Jack Coleman was his name, and he'd go by he'd go by Murphy's Tavern. Every trip he'd make downtown, he'd go to Murphy's Tavern. And at that time, you could buy a glass of beer for a nickel, and he'd have him a nickel beer. And he, and by the time school was out, Jack was just just barely able to make it up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Good teachers and so on, and we had a <coughs> we had good discipline. We had Mrs. Strayhorn, uh, Jeff Strayhorn. I don't know whether you ever knew him or not. He was uh, uh, run the farmers' exchange there for several years, and she taught school there for several years. But there wasn't a boy in school big enough. She was afraid to wrap up the side of the head. And she'd do it too. <clears throat> in in high school, what what was your what was your plan for after high school? Like, what what did you want to do for a job? Yeah, you know, well, really, I, I knew what was coming because World War II had already started, you know, and that's I, I knew that eventually, but they were they were going to draft me, just like. Uh, Mr. Souders, our superintendent, he was he was drafted in World War II. Wow. Was he was he a younger guy or? Uh, well, he was 
He was young enough that he was in the drafts in World War II. I'll be darned. And uh, he was over, he was overseas uh, in, in France. So tell me about the uh, baseball and and what? trying out for the the Browns, because I didn't know that. That's pretty interesting. Oh uh, well, uh, we had a real baseball team out there. Played played ball quite a bit. And uh, 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 I knew I knew I was going to service, and my dad had sold the farm and went to work for another fellow. Uh, and uh, he he lived outside of Stillville, uh, at Butts, Missouri. And uh, we had a we had a baseball team. Well, I played baseball. We played mostly. It got to where we played mostly softball, mm -hmm. but. Me and another kid decided we were just a, for the fun of it, we were just going to go down and try out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you're trying out for the St. Louis Browns? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did that go? Oh, well, I, I thought it went pretty good. Uh, uh, I always, uh, when I played baseball, I, I, I've done most of the pitching. And, uh, it was, it just falls there was a lot better than I was, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> so how did that, how did that work? Did you just show up and, or did they have no, like a No, a they had, uh, they set, they set a time. Oh, okay. They set a time and you could, uh, you could uh, ride in, uh, uh, ride in and get, and they'd send you a time to come. You know, and they had all, all the other, I think it lasted, Four days. Uh, <clears throat> huh. And you made it to the last day, huh? Made it to the last day. <laughs> <laughs> for for my generation, our, I don't know, big event that, that we can really remember is, is September 11th. And, and everybody remembers where they were on September 11th and what was going on and things like that. Uh, for, for your generation, it was... Pearl Harbor. Um, do you remember kind of where you were or, or what was going on whenever you heard yeah, about yes. Pearl Harbor? Can well, you tell me a little bit about that? I was on Sunday afternoon and uh, they'd, they'd already started to draft all the smell and had, had already been drafted. Of course Hitler was around a while in Europe you know, and even down into Africa. But uh, uh, I think they, they had an idea probably that something big was going to happen and, and they already had the draft going. I, I knew that as, as soon as I got old enough, 18, I had to, I had to register. Mm -hmm. And I was in the uh, first, first, I was in the first draft of 18 year olds. And they got down that low. But, uh, it, 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 was, it was quite a blow, you know, wondering what was going to happen, you know. It was all of a sudden out of a clear blue sky, uh, Pearl Harbor had been bombed. And it, it was, uh, <laughs> there, was a, there was a lot of, a lot of people who really shook up, mm -hmm. you know. That's, a, that's the first time, first time since the Civil War, you know, anything had really, really happened. and, and uh, that involved this country. Yeah. So, um, do you, do you remember where you were or, or what you were doing whenever you heard about it? I, I'm still I was still at home, but uh, uh, my my dad lived at Butts on he had a farm. I worked for a fellow on a farm out there, and I, I was still at home, and uh, I, I worked in a, uh, one summer for the highway department. Mm -hmm. Cutting right away with one of these handy andies. You know what handy <laughs> andy is? Yeah. Okay. That's how they used to trim these highways up. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'd 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 mow a strip or two along the along the side of the pavement, and then the banks, the ditches, and the banks, they they'd have a crew of handy andies and cut cut them off. Oh wow. And. Uh, that, that was some work. <laughs> oh, oh, and I, 
I forget what I made. I was like 45 cents an hour I got. That's probably pretty good pay at oh, that time. I thought that was good pay. I thought that, I thought that, was, that was a good pay. <laughs> <laughs> now, did did your family kind of struggle or, or have any difficulties during the Depression era, or, or did you all not feel it as much? We, that, that, when, I, when I went to work after I got out of school, was well, the only time I ever had him really had really had any money, you know, because uh, everything was cheap. You sell a bunch of hogs or a bunch of cattle, the price, the price was cheap. And there, was, there just wasn't much money. Uh, we had plenty to eat. We never suffered any for, for food or anything like that. Uh, uh, we, we, we lived, we didn't, it wasn't fancy living or anything, but it was, uh, home life was good. I mean, we was, Four boys and I had one sister, and uh, we all survived. So, <laughs> my uh, my grandpa told me one time. He said we didn't even know there was a depression. He said we were bef he said we were poor before it started, and we were poor after. He said no, so. that's true. That's true. <laughs> but everybody everybody was in the same fix. Yeah, the people you know. Uh, we. Uh, my, uh, you'd uh, go through the corn and cut out, cut, cut out the huckle, uh, uh, the huckle burrs with a hole, you know, and go mine with a, a disc cultivator and sow that dirt up into the corn and let it by and you'd still have huckle burrs when you <laughs> shut the corn, you know. But it wouldn't be wouldn't be near so bad. But a lot of things, and the old uh, moors we had, you've you've seen them, had a two wheel moor, pulled a team of horses, uh, an arm out here where the sickle was, and then you had a, a rake that you put your foot on, you rake and you put your foot on to dump it. And you, you better make the rolls pretty straight where you dumped it because <laughs> you come along, they come along and pick that up and then they, they shock it. And then they, later on they drag those shocks up and, and stack that hay out in the field or they'd come along and pick them up and take them to the barn. Huh. People today wouldn't know what to do <laughs> if they had to use that kind of equipment. <clears throat> so I, I guess you can probably remember the day you got drafted. Yeah, yeah, what you betcha. What uh, what was that day like? Like what was going through your head whenever you found out that you'd been drafted? Well, you know, it's really uh, in a way it was a shock, and the way it wasn't, it was just, it was just you no know, one of those things, you know. And uh, we had we had one fellow with us. There was. Um, Fulton Leesburg was an older fella, older fella. and uh, uh, he, he somewhat got out of the bus and we couldn't find him and everybody was worried for him he was going to get in trouble, you know, when the bus was ready to bring us back to Steelville. We got, after we were sworn in, we got a couple of weeks vacation mm -hmm. or time to do anything we needed to do before we went in. Then we had to report for duty. Mm -hmm. Uh, going down, going down for a physical, uh, there wasn't much, was much stress there, you know. But uh, it's a little different when you left. You wondered where you was going and and what what you was going to do. Huh? Hey, did you have any friends that had already been drafted, or did you know anybody uh, that had yeah. already been? Oh, I knew I knew some of them had been drafted, and some of them uh, and. Uh, um, uh, and listen, like one of like my boys I played ball with, uh, uh, he was older, a little, little, little older than me, a couple of years older than me, and he enlisted in the Navy, and uh, he was one of the boats that got sunk. <laughs> and uh, 
some funerals that the American Legion had there uh, burying those fellows. 